How are nice you? to see you today. I'm here with uh, Trevor Manton of Manton Push Rods, and uh, mostly uh, when we're selling engines, people want to know why the products that we have inside them are, are the best rather than the cheapest. So anyway, we do use Manton Push Rods, and uh, Trevor, if you could tell people why your product is the best. Absolutely. So our family uh, comes from the top fuel world, so my grandfather uh, went to school with Steve Leach and John Force, so in the top fuel days, uh, my grandfather was able to work with um, most of the teams to develop some of the most rigid push rods that anyone had seen, um, and we were able to use our proximity to the aerospace industry to use heat treatment uh, to give us more column strength and durability in the push rods. So for customers like over here that may be using 2, 000, making 2,000 horsepower with one of your motors, we can make a crit critical fastener quality push rod that gets a triple temper, a cryogenic process, and then if we're running a high-end shaft mount rocker system with a lot of lift, we can tailor the bearing surface, the amount of load it's going to see, and even the back cut to the underside of the tip to have clearance for the rocker arm for a solid lifter application per se. Even if we've got a solid lifter and we need to meter the oil to the top end, every tip is precision drilled, so we can actually pick the oil hole size almost like a jet chart to figure out how much oil volume do we need to the top end. Um, every push rod is made to order like a blacksmith, so you tell us the exact caliper your guys' engine builder tells us, and when you get there, your, your engine builder checks our work to make sure we did the job correctly. Mm -hmm. So when we make a product, we put our name on it, and we appreciate having the opportunity to work with people like yourself and your customer base. And we want to thank you guys for supporting them and their family business, as well as ours. Yeah, I guess uh, one of the questions that uh, uh, we always want to know uh, on any of the products we buy is not only where is it manufactured, mm -hmm. where are you getting the raw material from? So we make all of our push rods in-house. Uh, the majority of all of our lathes are Mazak. Uh, because of the tolerances of a Japanese machine, we can hold an arc radius very well. Uh, we get our 8620 from domestically here from the United States, our H13 tool steel. Uh, most all of that comes from Europe because we will not buy Chinese material. Our steel, our tubing is uh, is imported from Germany. We get a high-end 4135, not a 4130, so we can do a better stress relief with the additional carbon in there uh, to get you more durability in the part. So we we have to buy years in advance to get the stuff from Germany. So when you guys call, we have it. Uh, but when you're able to get a material that's pre-hardened, we have more versatility because we can use. Uh, what's called drawn over the mandrel. So we can cold draw the tubing and pre-harden it so when you guys call we can get a set of push rods out that day instead of let's say other manufacturers where they have to order the material soft and form the ends on it then it would have to go to the same procedure that Glock firearm or another uh, slide way would be made which is called QPQ nitriding which is the actual black procedure done to all one piece push rods. Right. With ours uh, we're able to do, again, the versatility of heat treatment by using cold drawn over the mandrel. We can use the same nitriding procedure if we're using a guide plate application, or we can do that uh, core hardened aerospace mar quench, which was dipped in salt instead of fluid, so that way the salt draws the heat away because it does not boil. Uh, with, if you do an oil quench, each bubble draws the heat away and puts additional Unevenly. stress and will make the part have built-in right. stress. It, exactly. So again, based off of our proximity to the aerospace industry, we're very fortunate we have more ability to tailor the heat treatment to the build characteristic like you guys would when you're putting together an engine uh, program and somebody's telling you their desire, we can help build that push rod based off of our know-how to give you the best product for the job. Right, yeah, and I guess in and, terms of the treatments that you're doing with the cold draw versus uh, the nitrite, uh, nitriding, uh, one is to the bone and mm -hmm. the other is more of a surface finish. Yeah, so when we do our guide plate style push rods, when we're doing the same heat treatment as a one piece, you're essentially building a hard boiled egg. The underneath of it is malleable and soft, but you're putting a hard eggshell on the surface. Uh, so we are still getting a good bearing surface at the ball, but the underneath cannot be heat treated as hard uh, because we're not doing an actual core hardening procedure 
with a temper, so you're not drawing back it. So you can't get a, the push rod into the 50 Rockwell range and bring it back down into the 40s to give it durability like a chisel or a hammer. You're actually using uh, the nitriding only to bring it up from maybe 7 Rockwell up to 22 when you're doing the nitriding, and you cannot draw the core back without affecting the other carburization. So now you can't get to the 43 Rockwell like we can and it be able to bend and come back to straight with memory. So it's uh, back from the top fuel days. In a top fuel car, we didn't have solid bar tool steel like we put into the Coletta cars today. We would use S7, which is a chisel material for the loading column in a top fuel car, and H13 for the bearing surfaces at the tip end, like most people would know H11 for potentially a head stud. Uh, we've used, again, that know-how from 12,000 horsepower to bring it back down and know what is a safe package for your customers to have a large window of insurance policy built into the product strength. Right. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, in terms of the benefit for the customers, the wear, the durability, the reliability of your products is as good as anybody uh, knows how to make. We can't make a better push rod unless you were going to spend ten thousand dollars a set. Right. And, and we're, that would be gun drilling, tool steel, and it would not benefit the valve train because all of the other components would have to be part of that telephone game and as strong. Right. Um, so back to the why our push rods could potentially be better if you ever change your camshaft. You send your push rods back to us and we'll take that billet bearing surface back out. Because we can hard machine in our facility, we'll go back in and we'll trim that push rod and we'll put a, a stress relief process after we pull it out, you know, and put a, a virgin bearing surface back in there at the new camshaft length if we had to deck the heads or we go to a thinner head gasket. So that way we don't compromise the preload on the lifter or potentially have the valve hang open because we don't have the push rod length correct. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, more versatility based off the design and having a higher strength value. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Well, appreciate you coming by and explaining. Thank you for that. having us. A any questions uh, come up from the audience? Okay, well, uh, if uh, you do have any questions, definitely give us a call, Borowski Race Engines, 815-725-2727. And, uh, We'll be able to hook you up. Thanks, Thank you Thanks again, Trevor. Thank you.